Troy Miller, it's great to have you on Engrace today. You're the president, or what's your title with NRB? Yeah, president and CEO of NRB. Probably a lot of people don't know NRB. Uh, I've known of it for a lot of years because my dad was on TV and we would always come to these. Uh, so explain a little bit about what the organization is and, and why it's important to have. You know, the interesting thing about NRB, this is our 79th year in, uh, in existence. So NRB was started back in 1944 uh, on an issue when radio was kind of the new medium out there and there were a lot of pastors that wanted to get on radio. Well, you know, there was a group that controlled the radio groups and the, there was this National Council of Churches and they said, you know what, we really want to decide who should and who shouldn't be on radio. So there was a group of evangelical pastors got together and said, you know, that's not right. And they got uh, in Moody Church and Chicago and they formed the National Association of Christian Broadcasters to advocate for the rights for any pastor, any Christian communicator that's out there to be in the public square. And so it's interesting that that started 79 years ago today and now fast forward, that's really the heart of what NRB does. We are working hard to make sure any ministry that's out there in, in communications, whether you're podcasting, you have a radio show, a television show, your radio TV broadcaster, whatever you are, we work hard to make sure that those avenues of broadcast distribution channels to the public square stay open and then we put on this big annual conference as well and I call this the iron sharpens iron conference where, where ministries and media ministries folks can get together and sharpen one another and and really work hard for the gospel and the kingdom of God a lot of people probably take for granted that you can turn on your radio and hear Bible preaching how awesome is that that we have that and you already mentioned how NRB had a big hand in that. How awesome is it to be able to, as a, as a pastor, I'm a pastor, is to be able to preach and broadcast or stream that message? Yeah, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to do that because, you know, we're called, pastors are certainly called to shepherd their local congregations, but how do you reach out to more people in your community? Everybody is in their car, they're listening to radio, they're driving to, to work in the morning or home at night, they're on a digital platform, social media, whatever, so it's a great tool to reach beyond the walls of your church or the walls of your ministry to reach out to that broader audience, introduce your ministry to them and really reach out and help people. Some, sometimes, you know, we're called, we, we shepherd the flock, but we're also called to keep growing the flock, keep reaching the loss, and, and it's a real privilege to do that. So we have uh, media changing. Oh. Uh, you mentioned radio, uh, and, and you've gone through a lot of iterations of, of media over the years, and we're getting into pretty amazing times when you can preach, and, and it's, it's everywhere instantly. So how has that affected this organization, what are some of the things that are uh, issues that you guys are, are a little concerned about um, in broadcasting or streaming? Well, there, there's a number of so let me let me get the first one. Two two things. Media has always been changing. We talked about we started with you know the first broadcast media, radio, and then came along television, and 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 when television came along, they said oh radio's dead, and then then came cable industry, and they said broadcast television's dead, and then came along the internet, and they said it's all dead. Well, it's all here and it's all alive and it it's is. all working today. Uh, radio is as strong as ever. Broadcast television is still reaching. Uh, hundreds of millions of people around the world in the in the U.S. alone, and so, but there is this ever-changing landscape in media, and I think our members and in it, with NRB's help have done an excellent job of adapting these new methods of distribution, these new mediums to get your message out there, whether it's the digital now, that's everything sort of in the digital world. Uh, we went from M, uh, radio to MP3s and, the, and all of these, and now we're into, of course, social media is a huge way to, to reach people. So I think it's a strong time because also because it's so easy to get into media today. It cost, when I started this 30 years ago, it was hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to get into media and today you can do it for a few thousand dollars and boom you're out there so that's one aspect I think that's encouraging because we're seeing a lot of people in the younger generations these very creative adaptive uh, young folks who are figuring out ways how to communicate the gospel on these new platforms and TikTok and, and Snapchat and 
and, um, and uh, Instagram and all of these areas. And it's just so fun to see them uh, take and adapt these things that have a lot of darkness in them and they're bringing light to them. So that's one. But you're right, there's a lot of challenges for Christian broadcasters and for just Christian ministries or Christians in general. Um, the, the, the government has been very hostile to the Christian message. So we've had to work on a lot of things in the regulatory environments, impediments, roadblocks that they throw up. And so we work hard on that. But the, the two big areas today, of course, is corporate America. Corporate America is really looks at, and I'm not sure why, and we're gonna work on this, they really look at the Christian message and they've done their best to stop it. We've had banks that have, have ended the services of Christian ministries. We've had uh, call centers and, and um, different communication platforms that have, that have um, canceled or kicked Christian ministries off. We have a number of social media platforms that have suspended ministries. And a lot of time they won't even tell you why. They just suspend you. So there's just a lot of hostility out there in the market today. There's also this thing called NRB TV. And uh, we've given NRB TV some of our episodes, some of our adventures. And uh, so how can people see that if, if they want to watch uh, and our TV. First of all, what is it and how can they watch it? Yeah, so 18 years ago we had the opportunity to launch a new channel. The association did, so we they launched NRB TV and NRB TV is what I say it's a Christian worldview PBS. Uh, so it was launched for independent program producers. A lot of ministries, I'm not knocking any other Christian television, all of them out there are great and have a role in God. We have great relationships with them all. But NRB was kind of, TV was started for the independent producer um, outside of a ministry that went into television. And so there's a lot of apologetics on there, documentary science, biographies, uh, series like yours that tells people what's going on in Israel and around the world. So just a just a number of programs out there. You can find it on DirecTV, channel 378. We're across a number of affiliates around the country. But the easiest way to find it is if you have a Roku device, which 70 million US households do, you just go in there, search in RBTV, and there you go. You have it live, and you can get access to all of our programming. Yeah, so one last question. When, when we started uh, television uh, for my dad's uh, preaching, uh, the cameras were big. Uh, expensive, heavy. Now I'm looking at our cameras and yeah. they're, they're, they're so much better. The quality is amazing. It's so cheap. So that can encourage people that want to do ministry and create content. And you can actually get it out there pretty inexpensively today. We live in a world that we can use the technology to, you know, to spread the message of God and the gospel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we often criticize technology. It is used for a lot of evils. But as Christians, we have the opportunity, as I said today, to get in there and use it to spread the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. We, we have the opportunity to, to, to bring light into a dark area. And as you said, I mean, I'm looking out here at your crew and looking at these, these young, young people, and this is just so great to see that they're in this. They're, 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 and their creativity, as I said, they, they just, you know, blow me away, some of the creative. And, you know, we just purchased some new equipment, 4K cameras for under $5,000. I mean, how crazy is that? You can carry it around. It's easy to do. Um, there are whole movies today shot on iPhones. Uh, that's just incredible. So, like I said, we live in challenging times, but we also live in times with tremendous opportunities for us to communicate yeah. the gospel. Troy, thank you not only for this interview, but for the work that you do on our behalf as broadcasters and, and digital streaming all of the different ways. <laughs> I mean, do you even know what's next? Like, right. what's the next horizon with media? There's a well, lot you know, there. we have a lot out there, and of course, we'll talk about it here, especially in our February conference, AI and the next horizon, what's going there? Yeah, uh, one of my editors said that one of our scripts that he wrote for a commercial was helped by AI. And I'm like, I don't know if I want that. Yeah, yeah that's But it was actually a pretty good script. I found one mistake. <laughs> Troy, thank you. Thank you, thanks for having me. <laughs>
And we also need you to hit the notification button and like the In Grace episode that you just saw. These ways will help more people hear about In Grace and more people hear the gospel of grace.